Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. Joe Day Soup. You practicing to be a stork? Oh. I was just trying to learn a few Japanese expressions to make Nabucco feel at home. Oh. Konnichiwa. Hello. Hello. Uh, watakuchi no nami wa. Uh, Betty Joe Day Soup. My name is Betty Joe. <laughs> Your name's gonna be mud if you don't finish carpet sweeping this hallway. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Bobby Joe to get me some clean sheets. Where is she? Downstairs, I guess. Oh. Bobby Joe! Konnichiwa! <laughs> We're all trying to learn some Japanese. According to those letters your pen pal Nabuka's been writing you all these years, she's going to understand your English much easier than your Japanese. Now, where's Billy Joe? Billy Joe's taking a bath. Billy Joe? Your Asho Wasu Isu Haj Imasu Masuka? What did she say? When does the floor show start? That's what she said. Hey. Konnichiwa. Betty Joe, could I get you to sew a button on this collar? I'm sorry, Uncle Joe. I've got to finish sweeping. Bobby Joe, would oh, you... I'm sorry, Uncle Joe. I have to help Mom now. Well, Billy Joe, would you sew a button on my shirt for me? Oh, sayonara. <laughs> hey, can I get a button sewed on this shirt? And give me a straight answer. In English. No. Is that straight enough? <laughs> Uncle Joe, we have so much to do here before the train gets in. How's it going to look? A girl comes all the way from Japan. And the first impression she gets of American manhood is that American womanhood don't sew no buttons on his shirt. Sarah Neuer. that button on too tight. I'm purpling into asphyxiation. Betty Joe, go ahead. Say you're welcome in peace. Betty Joe-san! The buco! Oh, you don't have any kind of idea who to tell you this. You don't have to see you. Looks like all that language study went to waste. Oh, Nabucco, I'd like you to meet my family. Oh, Betty Jo, it is not necessary to introduce me to them. I feel I have known them for years from the way you have described them in your letters. Your mother, the strict one. <laughs> Guess I'm not strict enough. Welcome. And Bobby Jo's son, the worm in the book. Bookworm. 
and Billy Joe's son. The boy crazy one with the scattered brain. Betty Joe, that lost something in the translation. <laughs> Uncle Joe! Oh, a lazy old dog. I'd know you anywhere. Kate, I think you ought to make a rule to censor all outgoing foreign mail. <laughs> For you, Mrs. Bradley. Oh, you didn't need to bring me anything. My pleasure for allowing me to be a guest in your home. Oh, oh it's so beautiful. Mom, why don't you try it on? Huh? Yeah, yeah. For my pen pal. Thank you. Look, a real pearl. It is a cultured pearl. They are grown in the sea near my home. How do they grow pearls? Or nothing to it. They get one of these here educated clams and they stuff a hunk of sand under his shell. It makes him some anti squirts pearls at you. Get that right, Nabuki? The, the young must not question the wisdom of the elders. You girls hear that? <laughs> Bobby Joseph, words of great wisdom from our great philosopher. Oh, thank you so much. A parrot can repeat words of wisdom, but cannot understand them. I read something like that once in a fortune cookie. <laughs> and for Billy Joe-san to practice the art of flirtation. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and for Uncle Joe-san to always hear happy sounds. There ain't nothing wrong with my hearing. That's a radio. Oh. Hey, how about that? Pixley Hardware's got a sale on snail bait. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And for you, this. <laughs> we'll fasten it for you later. Konnichiwa. Mom, you look beautiful. <laughs> like a most distinguished Japanese lady. Oh, thank you. You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to wear it at the next meeting of the Every Other Wednesday Afternoon Discussion Club. He'll give them something to discuss the Wednesday we're not discussing. <laughs> Have you ever had fried chicken before? No, but I'm looking forward to it. Betty Jo has described the excellence of your ability to prepare it. You see, I wrote some good things about you. Oh, strict one. <laughs> Help yourself. Please, Uncle joe san first. I've read that in Japan, men are always served first. They make good radios there, too. <laughs> in college. I'm hoping to teach English in Japan. Uh, where are you going to teach? Oh, there's a nice little school near my home. I've heard that Lenmore College has a very nice English department. They don't have a very good football team. <laughs> well, I don't think Nampuka will be going out for the football team. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Joe, pass the peas. Uncle Joe? I didn't know that. Know what? Pullman's emulsified oil is a sure cure for root knob. You been having trouble with root knob lately? Of course not. Then pass the pee. <laughs> hey, this is interesting. Uncle Joe, turn that thing off. It's not good manners. There ain't nothing wrong with my manner. Oh, Joe, you know better than to eat peas with a knife. She is. Is something wrong? Uh, well, uh... Am I not eating correctly? Oh, of course you are. <laughs> I'm glad I asked. I was going to eat the peas with this, uh... A fork? Oh, that's right. Oh. <laughs> well, the knife was considered correct by certain members of the older generation. 
<laughs> I must confess, I have never eaten with utensils like these before. No kidding. What do you use? Chopsticks. Well, Nabucco, if you're going to go to an American college, I think you better learn how to use a knife and fork. Let me show you. you want to know about. Don't be ashamed to ask. Yeah, you just follow my lead and them college people think you was born and brung up here. <laughs> In a depressed area. <laughs> Miss Worm in the book. Just a few more minutes, Mom. This book Nabucco brought me is fascinating. Lights out. <laughs> Flashlights, too. <laughs> Night, Betty. How do you like her, Mom? I think she's a very nice girl. Mom, I was wondering if tomorrow it's we... It's late. Get to sleep. Oh, but Mom, I just... Good night. And that's final. From the strict one. <laughs> Nabucco. Come in, please. <laughs> oh, my goodness, what are you doing sleeping on the floor? This is the way we always sleep at home. Well, try the bed. It's much more comfortable. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh it is all right, Mrs. Bradley. He's supposed to sleep on the floor. Isn't that better than the hard floor? Oh, much better. <laughs> We're glad you came to visit us. Good night, child. Good night. you have planned. Why don't you take her around, sure, where some of our important historical events took place. Like what? Well, you could take her down to the creek, sure, where Lem Walters busted his pole, pulling in that eight-pound trout. I know a real historical site you could show her. What's that? You, cleaning up the backyard like you've been promising to do for the last 20 Saturdays. Oh, okay. And when you're through, we'll put up a historical marker commemorating the event. <laughs> hey, just a second. Here's something she might like to do. Henley's Garage in Pixley's giving away free balloons for every grease job. The backyard. Not a bad price for Nedsel. <laughs> oh, something wrong? It is very strange to see you working, Mr. Cusset. What do you mean by that? In a Japanese household, it is the women who do all the physical work. What do the men do? Oh, they sit and talk and sometimes drink tea. You know, I've been saving up my money for 30 years for a trip to Chicago. I might switch to Japan. <laughs> and it brings blessed relief to people who've been suffering for years. How wonderful. All you gotta do is take a pill before going to bed. You wake up the next morning full of pep and vigor. Get me the name of those pills, and I'll buy you the large, lazy-type bottle. <laughs> Do you mind telling me why you're loafing around while Nabucco does all the work? It may look that way to your untraveled eye, but Nabuki was just showing me some local Japanese customs. <laughs> I was just telling Uncle Josan that in Japan, it is the women who do the work in the garden. Ah. Yeah. I didn't want her to get homesick. <laughs> oh, very thoughtful. You know, Nabucco, we have an American custom that covers this kind of situation. Oh, what is it? It's called hollering. <laughs> Uncle Joe! <laughs> Picnic? You mean with ants and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. You've got rocks in your head. Henry, Nabucco's a guest in this country. It would be a nice thing to do. You want to do something nice? Tell Billy Joe that I have been waiting for her nearly a half hour. 
Why do you always have to keep Henry waiting? Betty Jo, take the advice of a mature woman. Never be on time for a date. Oh, why not? It makes you look like you're eager to go out with him. Then why did you make a date with him? Because I'm eager to go out with him. <laughs> I don't understand that at all. <laughs> well, you will when you grow up. I think I'll let him stew another ten minutes. <laughs> Betty told me how you've been writing to each other all this time. Yes, she is a wonderful girl. I hope she doesn't grow up like Billy Joe. This is a record. She's been keeping me waiting 35 minutes. Perhaps something is wrong. Oh, no, she does it all the time. She does? I'm getting a crick in my back. Oh, please. Oh. Is that better? Yeah. Your feet. Thanks. Uh, perhaps you would like some tea. Crazy. I beg your pardon. Oh, I'd love some. What time is it? 8.32. Three more minutes. <laughs> oh, thanks. Cookies? Hi, Henry. Hi. Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> well, we're gonna be late for the show. Show? What show? Henry! <laughs> oh. Gee, I'm sorry, Nabucco. We, we have to be going. Gee, thanks for the tea and everything. My pleasure. Henry! <laughs> so long. Uh, hey, Betty, uh, I just got a great idea. Why don't we take Nabucco on a picnic tomorrow? Henry! <laughs> Potato salad, Henry son. I just love some more potato salad. I just love some more potato salad. Are there any pickles over there in Nabucco? Are there any pickles over there in Nabucco? I'd like another slice of bread, please. He's had six slices already. Henry! Huh? Do you suppose I could have another piece of chicken? Sure. There's plenty. Help yourself. <laughs> Why, of all the nerve, did you hear what's the matter with you two? You and your pen pal. What's she doing? Listen, it took me two years to get Henry to shape up, and she's ruining everything in one hour. My butter? Oh, lots more. <sighs> Henry never looked at me that way. Maybe he would if you waited on him a little more. <sighs> what are you, some kind of radical or something? <laughs> Used to sleeping in a real bed? Yes. I must admit, it is very comfortable. Oh, there are all sorts of things in America that are kind of nice, as soon as you get used to them. I like the picnic today, but there was one thing I do not understand. Billy and Bobby set apart from their men. Is this an American custom? Mm-hmm. It's known as having your nose out of joint. <laughs> you see, Bobby and Billy were upset because you were waiting on the fellas. And that's not the way we do it here. Our men are trained to... Wait on us. They like this? But we never asked them. <laughs> you see, it used to be that women did all the work and the men just sat around shouting orders. Then about a hundred years ago, the women of this country got together and they started shouting back. Oh, I have read about that. The War of Independence. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> but uh, you're going to be studying at an American college with American boys who've been brought up in the American tradition of waiting on themselves. But if you start waiting on them, you're gonna tear down all the work we women have done. But I have been brought up to serve a man. I do not know how to do otherwise. Well, it's just a matter of knowing a few of the basic rules. The first one of which is, nothing makes a man feel more like a man than helping a helpless woman. Kate. In the backyard, Uncle Joe. Put the basket down. But I... Your first lesson. Hey, do I got time for a nap before supper? Oh, sure, but, uh, Nabucco, didn't you have something you wanted to ask Uncle Joe? What? Well, would you mind carrying the basket of laundry into the house for me? Well, uh... It is too heavy for me. 
It's too heavy for me, too. But I'm sure it would be like lifting a feather for a big, strong man like you. Yeah, it is kind of light. Now for your first lesson in eyelash batten. Uncle Joe-san, would you mind getting me a glass of water? What? Please? I mean, please? <laughs> okay. Would you mind getting me one, too, please? What's the matter? You got something in your eye? Catching on real quick, Nabuki. Couple of more lessons, and you'll be able to take your finals. Eight o'clock. They're a half hour late. When they said 7.30, we shouldn't have gotten here until 8. I want you to get the treatment from the Buku. Now, remember, just complain about how uncomfortable that chair is, and she'll bring you a pillow. You're putting me on. No, you saw our action at the picnic. That was nothing. Just wait till I ask for some tea. Just stand back and watch the oolong fly. It's not American. But it is so un-Japanese to keep a man waiting. No, you listen to Mom. She made me what I am today. Thanks. I guess. <laughs> Operator 32K reporting. The enemy is below and chomping at the bit. Your finals are starting. Come on. Good luck. We'll give her a 10-minute start, and then you can go down. You know, I don't think this is such a good idea. Yeah. You give her two tea bags in ten minutes, and our name's liable to be mud. <laughs> oh, hi, Nabuku. Uh, we've been waiting for you. It was a beautiful day today, wasn't it? Beautiful. Oh, uh, say, this chair is pretty uncomfortable. My back is killing me. Oh, that is too bad. It really hurts. Perhaps it would feel better if you had a pillow for it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I need, a pillow. Henry-san, would you get a pillow for Roy-san? Me? <laughs> uh, my chair is uncomfortable, too. Uh, would you get a pillow for me, Henry-san? Huh? Please. <laughs> sure. Here. How's that? Fine. Although it would be more comfortable if I could put my feet up on something. Hey, Roy, the footstool. I thought you said... Oh, I thought you would get it for me, Henry-san. You are so strong. Sure. I'll get it. Thank you. Oh, I'm forgetting my manners. Uh, would you like some tea? Yeah. Yeah, we sure would. Well, the kettle is on the stove, the tea bag's on the cupboard, and the cups are on the table. You heard her, Roy. I thought you said... Said what? Nothing. Nothing. I'll get it. Oh, I would have a piece of lemon with mine. <laughs> Come on down, girls, and tell Nabucco she graduated with flying colors. <laughs> some lemonade, please. I'd love some, too, please. <laughs> well, I think Nabucco's gonna get along just fine in America now. Kate, I don't know whether you did the right thing teaching her the things you did. Well, I didn't want those fellas at college taking advantage of her. <laughs> yeah. But it was kind of nice having her do those soft little things. Yeah, I suppose so. I didn't even have to ask her to do nothing. She seemed to know what I want even before I did. <laughs> Wouldn't hurt American women to try to give it a little of that treatment. Yeah. I just might try it someday. <laughs> Sayonara. <laughs>
This has been a Filmways presentation.